December 29th, 1943. Oops, I missed the colon. It's quite unlike me to miss a colon. Anyway, hey guys, welcome back to, should I say, Phoenix Wright. I'm Nintendo Capri Sun. And, uh, continuing on with case three here. We just got done with the first stage of the investigation. Now it's court time. And Max does not look happy. Milk. You gave me life. You gave me milk. What? If I don't have a glass of milk before I go on stage, I just can't function, sweetie. Stage? Don't worry, there won't be a stage. All you have to do is sit down. You know, in the bathroom! It's like, seriously? Aw, oh, it's too early for that shit. Yeah, he is. Well, it's understandable. Hey, my sweeties. What? You don't think I should fly, do you? Huh? You know, you gotta make a good first impression. When I enter the room, maybe I should fly in and warm up the crowd a little. No, 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 no. We can't be having you flying around the courtroom. It just wouldn't be right. Imagine if you hit someone. Don't worry, Max. Just do what Nick says and everything will be okay. Oh, sweetie. What is it this time, Max? Why don't you try flying into the courtroom? <laughs> no thanks. I can see it now. The dashing young lawyer flying fabulously in from above. One glimpse of that and everyone in the room will be on your side. Max, really, no one needs to fly today. Nick, what's with that look in your eyes? Well, he's not actually thinking about it. <laughs> wow. Alrighty then. Um, I hope he's not actually planning on doing it. Let's see here. Okay, so Von Karma is back. Whoa, 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 what's it doing? Why is it skipping? Oh. I thought my 3DS was freaking out for a second there. I'm like, well, I'm not pushing anything. Uh, Your Honor, get on with it. I'm sorry, I just realized the defendant's name is Billy Bob Johns. So? <laughs> well, isn't the defendant also known as Maximilian Galactica? Yes, that's his screen name. You know, my grandchild is a huge fan of his. I think everyone here wouldn't mind if we called Defendant Maximilian Galactica. Well, fine. It sounds more friendly. It should be interesting to see, like, you know, because Von Karma has, like, never lost a case. So this is her first time back in the courtroom after losing a case. Like, it's kind of interesting that she came back. That she didn't, like, quit altogether just because she lost one. I hope you didn't bother thinking you'd win this one, Mr. Phoenix, right? Eh? <laughs> that spirit channeling trial was a sham. I refuse to acknowledge its legitimacy. Alright. If we have to beat you twice, that's what we'll do. It did not count, do you hear me? Alright. You have no chance. Zero. Zilch. Nada. I'm not losing this case. Why, you ask? Because it is not in the nature of a Von Koma to lose at anything. So somehow they managed to drag this out for another... case, I guess. I don't know. Whatever. I'll show you the textbook procedure for proving how absolutely guilty you are. I'm not guilty! I didn't do shit! Don't be whipping my ass, man! Your ultimate revenge. Wow, you're finished already? Well, good, that's a relief. You may call your first witness. Alright. Detective Dick comes you. Get up there now! <laughs> Jeez. Here we go. Sorry to keep you from work, as I'm sure you need every penny you can earn, Detective. Oh! Oh, man. Don't mention it. It's no trouble at all. I've been looking forward to this. You have? Why did he say that? At your service, sir. So happy. 
Ah. Oh, man. Oh, man. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going too crazy here. Details of the events. Let's see. The night of the crime, snow was falling until 9.40 p.m., making it extremely cold out. Okay, yeah, snow usually makes it cold. All the circus performers gathered in the big top to practice their routines. Practice session broke up at around 10 p.m. The murder itself took place in the plaza in front of the lodging house at 10.15. The victim was found bent over a wooden box, dead as a doornail. A wooden box. The cause of death was blunt force trauma that snapped a vertebrae in his neck. Ugh. That sounds awful. I see. He was beaten to death. Well, I sure hope that, like, it was just one blow, you know? <laughs> anyway. Here's the autopsy report for the victim. The court will accept this into evidence. Here we go. Look at that monkey over there in the evidence, man. What's he doing over there? A blunt object. Hmm. Very well, Mr. Wright. You may begin your cross-examination. Here we go. Yes, Your Honor. Whatever am I going to ask him? Well, there isn't much there. It's like... The night of the crime, snow was falling until 9.40 p.m., making it extremely cold out. Detective, has it been your experience that snow always makes it cold? Oh, sure. It was nearly a blizzard up until the time of the crime. Did it pile up? <laughs> oh, man. It wasn't such a big deal. Maybe about an inch and a half was on the ground. Snow froze in place and stayed on the ground until the next day. Hmm. The snow, let me see. There's got to be more to this. What's the matter? Uh, <laughs> hmm. So all the circus performers gathered in the big top to practice their routines. Alright. Yeah, everyone but the dancers and staff. Okay. Um. Okay. So pretty much everybody we know was there. Almost forgot Regent the Tiger was there as well. Yeah, what about that monkey? Oh. Man. Well, okay, I hope oh, wow, I would hope he did that already. Okay, whatever. The practice session broke around 10. That's pretty much what everybody's been saying, though. After the practice was over, where did everyone head off to? Home! Regina was playing with Regent while Mo went back to his room, tired from work. Ben the ventriloquist went to the front gate, absorbed in his own world. The ringmaster and Max went off to the ringmaster's room to talk privately, okay? So far, the story's straight here. Not really, we know a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, there is that. <laughs> the murder itself took place in the plaza in front of the lodging house at 10.15. How certain are you, though, that it was... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know how much more specific he can get, he wasn't there. Ow! <laughs> this is totally meaningless. Time to move on. Alright. Just have to revisit that testimony later when you're in a better mood. <laughs> Detective Gumshoe, would you mind telling us how the victim met his end? And that leads us into the final statement, which is... This. Or maybe there was one more after it. I forget. <laughs> the wooden box. That's right. The victim must have been carrying the wooden box when he was killed. Oh. Maybe. Does this have anything to do with, like, his daughter? Was he gonna give... You know... Give his permission to Max along with, like, a huge wedding present or something? Okay. What's so strange about it? 
Huh. Okay, now we have the wooden box. But it's locked, and he says it looks strange, whatever. This may be my only chance, so I might as well ask some questions. Uh, start with about the wooden box. This wooden box, you figure it weighs about 20 pounds, right? Sounds about right. The whole thing is lined with iron. Iron plating? Why do you think it's lined with iron? Because it's a Zelda chest, aren't they all- Ow! I think we could all do without your guesses, detective. Stick to what little you actually know. <laughs> Suffice it to say the box is really heavy. Much better. <laughs> the cause of death was blunt force trauma that snapped a vertebrae. So actually, I want to go back and get these other two. Okay, about the lock. Here we go. You said the box was locked. How exactly was it locked? Hopefully not from the inside. Well, it had quite a sturdy lock on it. It took quite a bit to open that bad boy up. But you did open it. Okay, and it was locked when you found it, okay. Alright. Okay, let me, let me go ahead and get the third one while I'm here. Okay, about the contents, here we go. Do you mind telling us what was inside that box? He's not gonna tell us. Well, when we found the box, it was locked tighter than Fort Knox. So we took it back to the station and cracked it open. All that was inside was this little bottle. Bottle? Condiment bottle? Like a salt shaker? It's a pepper? Huh. Pepper? Why in the world was it locked in that big box? Huh. Small seasoning bottle added to the court record. Well, that's interesting. Okay, let's go on here. According to the autopsy report, the murder weapon was a blunt object, correct? You've done your homework, pal. And you haven't found this murder weapon, have you? The police are searching for it as we speak. My theory is that it's something the perpetrator ran off with. You would think so, especially since you didn't find it on the scene. Well, I, if I was a perpetrator, I wouldn't be dumb enough to leave it behind. Oh! <laughs> that sounds... that's a little biased, if you ask me. Yeah, probably. <sighs> Alright. What do you got? I'm not even off the stand yet. Yeah, I know. Because... <sighs> well, okay, you kind of took the words out of my mouth. Except I was going to make a different kind of joke that I probably got no business making anyway. Because it applies to me, too. I don't know, but wrapped up has such a mean sound to it. I'm a sensitive guy. Alright, see you later, Gumshoe. Thanks for the pepper. Oh, no. Uh, nope. She's probably talking about Ben from Lost. Who I'd actually would prefer it be Ben from Lost, but... <laughs> Let's hope not. Oh, man. Please state your name and occupation for the record. I don't think he can. He's too busy getting punched. He's too busy beating himself off. My full name is Trillo Quist. I am employed as an opera tenor. Excuse me? The witness called to the stand was one Mr. Benjamin Woodman, ventriloquist. That robe must be cutting off your circulation. I said that I was a singer. Maybe you don't believe me. Fine, I'll grace you with a song. Sorry, I had to cut out a yawn there. I am not keeping those yawns in anymore. Or whatever. <laughs> me, 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 me. Uh. The world of the law, exciting and daring. Guilt or innocence decided by a judge dressed up like a woman. Well, what do you think? Huh. 
<laughs> oh, man. Troll, you know better than to insult a judge. Shut up! Just look at your nose. You would think you'd have the sense to fix it. It's so ugly, I want to punch you in the face on the off chance swelling would help. You know that your nose is the reason you'll never be an A-list star. <laughs> Man. Yeah, no kidding. That's all I got. Don't worry about me, sir. I'll let Trillo handle this. I'm not worried about you one bit. I'm worried about getting... Whoa! Alright, let's proceed. Mm -hmm. Alright, who are we... Who's witness... Who's speaking here? Once practice was over, I left the tent with the stoot. I mean, clown. Once we got to the lodging house, I ditched him and went over to the plaza. Okay, this is a, this is not good. This is really not good. He was the only one heading that way. How could that punk not be the killer? Well, he's probably headed for his meeting with the the guy, though. Cause isn't that like around the same spot? Then the police showed up and took Magic Boy away. No, there's a lot missing from that. You saw Max heading towards the scene. You're sure of that? Yeah, but when when was that? That's the thing. He had on a silk hat, cloak, and the dumb white roses on his chest. How can you mistake someone with that crazy get-up and his nose stuck up so high? <laughs> yeah. That's right, dress boy. Since you weren't with him, couldn't that mean the clown committed the crime? Could be. What a shame. It was a nice theory, but the clown can't be the criminal. Why is that? The hat. Yep. Well, sure, yeah, I know, but it's not impossible he could have taken it on his way there. Without question, he was wearing his signature hat during practice. If the clown was the murderer, there would be no reason for this hat to be at the scene. Hmm. Well done, Miss Von Karma. Your prosecutorial skills are unrivaled. Well done. Yep. Thank you for stating the obvious. Well, that saved you a couple whips, I guess. Mr. Phoenix Wright, what do you have to say? D okay. I guess she's the boss again today. She was born to run. <laughs> okay, what do we got here? Oh, shoot. Ah, uh, alright. I'll be right back. Okay, guys, I'm back. I'm so sorry about that. Something I ate yesterday just didn't agree with me. And ever since yesterday, <laughs> let's just say it hasn't been pleasant. But, um... Anyway, trying to, try to be more of an adult about this today. Instead of saying, oh, I had to go take a dump. Ha 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 ha! I a dump! Once practice was over, I left the tent with a stooge. I mean, clown. Wait, have we pressed all these already? I don't even remember where I was. Once we got to the lodging house, I ditched him and went over to the plaza. That's when I saw Max heading towards the scene of the crime. He was the only one heading that way. How could that punk not be the killer? Then the police showed up and took Magic Boy away. Hmm. Yeah, I know, exactly. It's probably why Max conked him over the head. Uh, Nick, wasn't Ben the one who got conked over the head? Yeah, I think so. Well, even if he conked Trillo over the head, he would still be hitting Ben's most popular lover, his right hand. So, you know, 